Hello, welcome to Bars and Bells. My name is Lauren. And I'm Ian. And this is our strength and swing class. Week seven. Seven of seven. And it's the time you've all been waiting for where we, or some of us, get to swing 100 kettlebell swings. Over the past seven weeks, we've been progressing our skills, working on our get-ups, our two-handed swings, slowly increasing the load. And tonight we get to test that theory and get to 100 by doing 10 sets of 10. Don't worry, that's not quite yet. We'll do a nice body weight warm up. Our kettlebells are off to the side. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's do it. And that means I'm getting started because tonight I'm doing that upper body. So I'm continuing to progress my calf injury journey. So I will be doing various different things throughout the class but joining you where I can. And I can join you right here with my palms facing forward, my ribs cage over top of my hips. And let's gently elevate our shoulders, shrugging them up and then pulling them back down. We'll send our shoulder blades forward where we don't want them in our kettlebell swing, and we'll pull them back together where we do want them. Then from there, let's extend on those wrists, reaching them towards the back wall. Slowly curl your wrists to make fists, curl them into flexion, bend on the elbows. We're gonna drive the elbows to the front of the room, open them up to the side. We'll go a light extension on elbows, and then reach those hands and palms away, opening them up. Try to reach either side of the room, feeling the light zing through those Ooh. elbows. Can and then it. we'll curl up the hands again, curl up the fists. We'll send the elbows to the side, but then we're going to bring them back into our rack position here. So we're in a double rack. Our elbows are in nice and tight. Our knuckles are pointed towards the ceiling and our forearm is vertical as we'd hold our kettlebell. Now from here, let's shrug one shoulder up and pull it down and slowly press our imaginary kettlebell towards overhead. Once it's in your safe overhead position, cage down, re-straighten your elbow, push it a little more overhead. Repeat, straighten the elbow, little more overhead, cage down. Stay here, shrug or elevate the shoulder up, pull the shoulder down, and now slowly start pulling that bell back to the rack position. Whew. Let that rest, but let's pay attention to the other invisible kettlebell. Keeping the shoulder low, slowly press the arm towards overhead. Once it gets there, keep the elbow nice and straight. Shrug the shoulder up, pull the shoulder down. Keep the elbow straight, try to get it a little more overhead, cage down. One more time, shrug up, pull down, elbow straight towards overhead, and then part, start pulling the sky down all the way back to double rack. We'll rotate our palms to face away, keep our shoulder blades together, and slowly press the floor all the way down, warming up those elbows to full extension. Then shake that out. One more move for me with the cage, and then we'll get to that low body here. Let's do our rib slides. So extend your arms out to the side, stake your stance a little bit wider than your feet, and imagine I'm pulling your arm one way and your cage is gonna slide. And then use your core to pull your cage back on top, and repeat in the other direction. Pull here from side to side, using that core, and the other side. Drifting, but intentionally drifting as we go one more time each way, keeping the chest the same height, the shoulders nice and level. We'll return to center, bring the arms in, give that a little shake and wiggle, and pay some attention to our low body. Let's get down to the floor utilizing that lunge right away. So step back into that lunge position if you're able, and then scissoring or squeezing your back butt cheek to return to the ground with control. In this position, let's tuck under or cat the back hip and pull the front femur into the hip. Maybe that tips it to cow. Squeeze your back butt cheek, and from there, just open that leg to the side. Same thing, maybe a little bit of a hip hike, hip depress, meaning up and down, finding that level position independent of having that body move. Then from here, let's do a rotation at the head neck to look over the knee and a torso turn to follow. We'll hinge on the hip, placing the hand down, fingers, calluses, hand, then at the head, look so that your nose looks at your thumb and then turn the torso that your sternum or your heart faces the floor. Then at the head, rotate to look at the sidewall and then turn through your body very much like a get ups position and repeat one more time of the head to the nose on the ground. Oops, that's a thumb down there. And then we'll turn our torso, sternum face floor. Head first, it rotates, then turn the torso, then push the ground away and return the head to look straight ahead, then the torso, and then that side leg. 
return it underneath, and repeating the same thing on the other side. Pull in that front femur, tuck under that back hip. Again, incorporate that glute squeeze to stay strong on the trailing hip. From here, we'll just open that leg out to the side between that one and two or 10 and 11 position, and a little bit of a hip hike here, independent, again, of having the body move. Find that nice level position for you, and at the head neck, rotate to look over the knee, then turn the torso. Then we'll just hinge the hip right away, finding fingers, calluses, and full hand on the floor. And at the head neck, rotate to look at the thumb. That's that thumb down there. Got your nose. And then turn the torso. Look with the head first, turn through the shoulders. In this moment, we're aiming to keep that shoulder blade pulled down or a nice open shoulder. And then one more time, rotate to the ground, head first, torso to follow, and returning to the tall position, the head first, then the body, push through the hand, and reset the head, the torso, and then that leg to the center and down. Often, we like to load up those core muscles, so let's get into a nice high planks tension here, mimicking the tops of that kettlebell swing, and as Lauren holds those kettlebells, so cue us up. With the hands underneath the shoulders, the shoulders pulled down, the abs ready to brace, we'll tuck our toes and lift our hips in line with our shoulders. Squeeze our butt cheeks. Pull the floor together underneath you. Breathing and bracing. Everything is tight. We need all our muscles in this workout, so tighten up every last one of them except for your face. <laughs> then pull tight, tight, tight for three, two, knees down. Whew. Relax. Press the floor away. Give that a little shake out. Let's do that one more time. I just, I tried to keep it loose. <laughs> I tried to keep a straight face while keeping it loose. Up into that plank position. Ready? Yep. Everything's tight. Go. This time without moving, pull your right hand to your left hip. And then pull your left hand to your right hip. And create that cross body tension. Squeeze your cheeks. Pull your kneecaps up so your quads are tight. Grip your hands. Screw your elbows in for three, two. Let's lift the hips, getting to our first hinge position. Adjust your feet as needed. Walk your hips back to load up and then press through to tall. Ooh. So we did call this our 100 kettlebell swing workout, but that was a little bit of a gentle lie here as you warm up just for a couple quick sets. So it might be about 110 swings, but we gotta do that prep first just to make sure that you and your hinge are feeling good for today. So I'll be standing behind my kettlebell and Lauren, don't necessarily do this, but do what you want. You know how it feels, but take your time. If you're brand new to this workout, maybe go all the way back to episode one. But here we are in episode seven with a hike pass for one, two stop swings, and three continuous swings. Get in touch with that swing hinge. Let's do it. So, so hands on hand. bell, tip bell, pull to zipper, and then park. Now this time, pull one full swing through and re-park. Repeat again. Pull, swing, through, Park, and last time, this time, three swings in a row. Tight. Plank at the top. Exhale, hips drive through. And then place the bell down. Let it go. Drive the hips through to stand up tall. Awesome. Ooh. Great. Even in that static hinge that Lauren was, you probably feel some load on your hamstrings. Those are appropriate places to feel the tension. Abs, glutes, hamstrings, lats. Making sure it stays out of that low back. And until we swing again, let's get to the floor. For those who are able... Looking at you, Lauren, and we'll do one get up on each side. All right, I'll call it out, but I'll be holding my bell in my firing range position. So as we make our way down here, we'll start in the cuddle, roll to our back with two hands, and press that kettlebell towards overhead. Once you're there, it's that hip drive and pull on the elbow. Find the hand, squishing the bug. Bridge, sweep through. Hand leaves floor. Square up that lunge so you can bo use both legs to stand up and then reverse it. Step back, lunge, open, rotate, hinge, sweep, elbow, press to your back, two hands, bell comes down, returns to the floor. Right on. And repeats. Repeating on the other side. And often that first one is the hardest or the heaviest for those in that firing range position. But here we go. You know that two handed press. Whew. Take a breath to reset and then drive through the hip and sit nice and tall. It's a bridge and that sweep. Press the floor away and then square up the lunge. Tall tension as we stand and then pull yourself down. 
squeeze your back butt cheek, and then open the windmill, hinge it again, find your tall sit to the elbow, to the floor, watch out for that wall, and then we're back to the ground. Those who are able, come on up with no hands. Ooh, got that pistol squat still on that side. That's nice to see. And right here, it's that last little swing prep for the warm up. Let's do five swings together, and Lauren will tell us how the day will go forward after that. Uh, we'll talk about that right now, or you should just do your swings. Like a warm up set, or my you're first doing set your ten. five, right? My five. Sorry, yeah. you're going to talk about it, and I didn't know if you wanted to talk and swing. Five swings here, using that hip hinge, driving through every time to that tall plank position. If you're not feeling the swings Ooh. today. We can go ahead and do a couple deadlifts. That deadlift precedes the swing. Do it with your body weight. Do it with a light kettlebell. You could do with that barbell. But here we are today for 100 kettlebell swings. So normally ten we go. sets of 10. Yes. And normally we do just I go, you go. So you would go with one of us and break with the other. But one of us is not going to swing today. So instead of swinging, I'll be holding my bell in various positions for the same duration it takes Ian to swing 10 swings. Ready? It's your first set of 10 or the number you choose. Here we go. When you're ready, you're ready. 10 continuous swings. Remember, each time at the top, tips drive through, abs braced, punch in the butt, punch in the stomach. Only do that to people you like and who are okay with it. Hips are driving through each time. Tight at the top. Place the bell down with control. My turn. I go, you go. So Lauren's here holding it in that goblet hold position. The feet are rooted, just like in our swing. The core is braced. I dare not hit her, for my hand might hurt if I did, and other reasons as well. And I'm not sure that time Lauren started with, but we're going to put it down, and we're working for about 15 seconds of work, and then 15 or 30, if I can stretch it, as a rest interval. Well, Lauren won't Team let me. Team Ian, set number okay. two here. You're up. Exhale. As you get a little more tired throughout today's practice, make sure you keep that breathing match. So the hips drive through with the exhale. Hips drive through. Good, we're keeping the brace on the way down and we're loading up that hinge every time, placing the bell down. Awesome. So again, high tension, high coordination with that breath and the swing. And now we just wanna slow things down, in and out of the nose if we can. Not always easy either. Nice and slow. Shake it out, and when Lauren puts that down, and I'll just keep talking till she Team looks Ian. at me and says, set go. number three. Here we go. I'm feeling a lot of pressure to remember which number of set we're on here. It's like I've become the counter tonight, which can go well and cannot go well. So you are rounding out this third set here with 10 strong swings. Remember, if 10's too many, do a number that's less than 10 and try to stick with us, even if it's 10 sets of five. So, avoid saving those repetitions. Use them all in a safe way versus going a little bit easy just so you can make them all. It's better to do five high quality reps than 10 so-so reps. Take your time in between, shake it out. If you sound like a broken record, that's okay because we say the same things a lot because they work and it helps us stay strong. Basically all day, every day. Set number four for Team Ian here, 10 swings. This is getting you closer to the peak of the pyramid, the median number of it all. But here you are, getting towards 40 swings. Grip is tight, because you don't want to let go of that bell, but don't over grip the bell with those hands. All right, great job. If you're not just gripping with your hands, you're gripping with those shoulder blades. You're gripping with nice straight elbows and the abs and the lats. Feel the connection of the kettlebell to your core to get a good connection for safety and strength. You're breathing, Lauren. Yeah. We're definitely shaking here. <laughs> We're about to start our 41 to 50th repetition here. And I'm excited because that means we're about halfway done. Set number five, Team Ian. Great work. And keep the pattern. Keep the enthusiasm. Keep the consistent swings. You should be able to keep Ian's pace here if you're a little bit ahead, a little behind, not too worried. If you're really far off, something's going a little bit awry or you're counting better than he is. You can keep talking because it gives us more rest. But in that stationary hold for Lauren, oh. the feet are rooting. The shoulder is shrugged just a little bit. 
gravity is pulling to the left. The camera's lopsided. So find yourself in that middle position. <laughs> and breathe. Whew. I feel like I'm overcorrecting. There we go. Whew. Five, three, two. Take as much time as two. you want. All right, team 51 in. 51 to 60. Set number six here. Good. Getting to the number 60. No problems. Keeping it tight. Exhale. Hips drive through. Hips drive through. Good. Keeping your core like a tree trunk. Even when that bell is going behind you, tree trunk. That's out. right. It's high tension for the swing and higher tension for the swing. The feet push out, then they push out even harder. Then when you're resting, shake it out, stay loose, shadow box, jump up and down a little bit, conserve your energy, but stay loose. Feel that difference between tension and somewhat of a relaxation state here. All right, team Ian, set number seven. You're getting close to the end here. You're rounding the bend, but all of these reps look like your first set. Might be a little louder, might be a little dragon and breathier, might feel the heart rate a bit more, but the strength is still there. The power is still there. Ooh, ooh. She's saying all the good words here. I like it. <laughs> Helping us stay nice and strong together here. This is that rack position, knuckles to the ceiling, armpits retracted and breathing underneath the duress as we recover and as you might be performing that kettlebell hold. I'm gonna take an extra second. Ah. So just to reiterate here, oh, I'm reiterate doing this away. because I'm not doing that. So if you're doing that, you're only doing that. Okay. Don't feel you have to copy me as well. Ready, set, team Ian. Set number seven, correct? Oh. Like, see? <laughs> I told you the stress is real. I'm pretty sure I'm right. I think that was that set, set six. I think that's 80. Really? I do. I do. Laura, you're supposed to keep track here. I knew I was going to mess uh, you up. That's okay. That's okay. Actually, I know how we can keep track. <laughs> Well, if Lauren can come up with the right answer, Six. we'll stick to it. You're right. That was eight. Okay, good. Based two on my holes. Sets only. Based on my Not holes. only, but two more sets. So thanks. <laughs> Keeping track of more important things like taxes and, you know, bills and payments, accounts receivable and payable. But keeping track of reps is important too. Those well, are bigger numbers than one to ten, but apparently one to ten is tough. So this is set. All right. This is set nine, everyone. Getting us to 90 swings. Keep it strong. Keep it tight. Tight. Make sure those hands stay intact. You still want to practice next week. So don't go ripping those hands open just trying to get to 100. Ooh. Ooh. Here's right. Let out a nice cathartic sigh. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. And honestly, it's challenging, but I'm finding myself getting into that groove now. Not always easy, and not always your experience, but find that number that you get to feel challenged, but ultimately finish with integrity. Oh. So with that said, here we go. Team in one more set, and then I have one more low carry when you're recovering here. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 10, 98, 99, 100. Ooh. Super job, everyone. Super job. Seven weeks in the making together with you here, but also many years in a row getting together with this type of a load. I was able to do that with our 32 kilogram load. And last time we did the same test last year, I used the 24. Finding those ways to do the same thing, but making it harder and variable with that introduction of a heavier load or more time under tension. So as you breathe with Teeny in here, let's take that nice inhale for four and exhale for four. And inhale for four and exhale for four. One more time, in for four and out for four. Now this time in for four, hold for four, exhale four. Hold empty, four. In for four. Hold for four. 
Exhale for four. Hold empty for four. In for four, one more time. Hold for four. Exhale for four. Hold empty for four. And relax. Hoo-wee, <laughs> nice work. Not quite done. Not quite if done. If we can return to that get up, let's do it from the top down this time, integrating the overhead press, practicing those in our Thursday session on the other side with the bar. But here we are integrating a press Lauren will hold that bell overhead for the entire duration that we do our get up. Press up overhead, down and up, counts as one. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we'll pull that bell to the rack position, taking a big inhale and pressing it overhead. And we'll hold, oh no, you're doing a get up. I'll hold it for you here. As you work yourself down, keep breathing as needed. Use your elbow to push away to your back and then come back up, keeping that bell up to the elbow to the hand, that bridge sweep, get in that lunge position, looking ahead. Once you're standing, control the pull down. And then two hands, placing it right. down. Awesome. Cool. And then we do one side, we'll try to do on the other. It's that hip hinge to start, a pull to the rack, full body tension, and a press. Leg you can touch, drop back in the lunge. Open. This is that windmill in the warm up. Sit tall, find the elbow, return to your back, then drive. Sit tall, sweep, press the floor away, square up the lunge, tall stand, pull down, and return to the floor. Do you have one more set on each side? Do you have one more? I do. Let's do it together or finish with that task that's appropriate for you. An overhead hold, rack hold, suitcase hold. Let's do it one last time. One more time. Hip hinge. <gasps> Inhale, prepare. And press that bell. Nice, Lauren. And then your full get up down. The leg you can touch. The hinge. The sweep. The elbow. And back. Keep the bell up. Return to the elbow. To the hand. Bridge sweep. Step through both legs, up together, pull down, and park. One more time. Nice. A last little routine today, and then you can celebrate with some water. Hip hinge. Sounds good. Inhale, and up. And maybe tacos. We're having tacos tonight. Step back, lunge, open up, rotate hinge, sweep looking at that bell as you steadily turn to your back and then come back up, elbow, hand, bridge, sweep, press, step, up, control the down, and then two hands and park the bell. We did it. Did it. It wasn't easy. It wasn't as we predicted when we set up these seven weeks, but together with you, we did it. So thank you very much, Lauren, for sticking with it. Some days, I didn't really want to do this, to be honest, but team Lauren, coach Lauren rather, helped the team make sure that we stayed together and stayed stronger. So thank you and thank you. Thank you and thank you. And we are taking a rest week, so everybody should just enjoy a week off or go back in the archive and check out one of the 3,000 videos we have there that you could do in your own time. But in our week off, we will be making sure that calf is mending, eating some delicious food, sleeping in a little bit, and doing a light workout routine just to keep ourselves moving. Keep the moving. following week after that, we're back with another week of semester classes. So stay tuned for those live on YouTube. But on Thursday, of course, we have one more round of our plie and press workout, getting those hips and those presses going. So check that out. Check out our website, our blog entries, and our Patreon page. And until next time, take care. Stay strong. And let's train soon. Take care. Goodbye. Bye. -bye.